Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. Now, in a recent video, I showed you a big box of Action Man bits that was very kindly donated to me here. And in amongst that lot was the German motorbike and sidecar, as you can see here. Now, I have to say a massive thank you to Gary Newton, who donated all of this stuff. It's uh, some great stuff and some great things to be restored. And this is the first one of the sort of larger jobs that I will uh, cover here. As you can see, Gary had taken apart this uh, motorcycle and sidecar in the preparation for restoring it. And that's about as far as he got. And he said uh, he'd send it over here for me to finish off and try and fix all of the issues that he'd had with it. So let's take a closer look and we'll see what needs fixing and what we We've got to do in this restoration. The first thing we're going to have to do is actually just give everything a good clean. It's been taken to pieces but none of it has been cleaned at all so if we look at the wheels and stuff you can see they're quite dirty. There's an awful lot of dirt and grime inside the sidecar and on the back uh, wheel here and a lot of the stuff is just quite filthy. So that's the first job and uh, it will just uh, be a case of giving everything a good wash in some uh, hot soapy water and we'll be able to clean everything up. The next sort of main thing to do is probably the gun as you can see here. It's got a little pin that's supposed to come out of the bottom of the gun and that fits in a hole on the front of the sidecar and that's how it sort of mounts but uh, more often than not with these you can see they are snapped this one is snapped so uh, we're going to have to find a little bit of plastic or something that we can replace that with so that we can then stick that back in the hole it, it, it does fit at the moment but it's a bit too short and a bit too close to the top of the car so uh, I think that's a fairly straightforward thing to fix uh, then we have uh, these seats now these seats are very rare and very brittle and as you can see this one has uh, cracked in a couple of places it's already been glued once and um, so I'm gonna have to glue that again and I might see if I can put some sort of reinforcement on the inside uh, to just give that a little bit of strength uh, more often than not when you find these uh, motorcycle and sidecars this will be missing and this is probably the hardest bit to find and it is incredibly brittle so uh, we're going to handle that one with care uh, then of course really everything has got to be put back together all of the uh, sort of axles and stuff have been taken apart now I'd say if I was doing this I probably wouldn't have taken all of these apart uh, I would have actually just cleaned it as is but uh, they have been taken apart so I can give all of these a good clean these are just sort of push fit end caps you can see there's a sort of a hexagon of uh, little teeth in there and when you push these on they will grip onto the pole this is actually the, the wrong pole uh, they'll grip onto that some of these are bent out of shape so I'll just have to uh, bend those slightly back and that should uh, get those to grip. And the same things are used on the wheels and on the handlebars. Then finally, I think it's gonna be stickers. It does have quite a few of the stickers as you can see here, uh, but there's one missing on there. I do actually have a different one of those. So I should be able to recreate all of the missing stickers and we can put that all back together. And hopefully it should look quite nice. I think really it's not too bad of a restoration. It's just a lot of cleaning and a couple of little fiddly bits. So let's start off by giving everything a good clean. Using just hot water and dish soap, you can get most of the marks off of these sorts of things. I was trying to be particularly careful when cleaning this vehicle because some of the stickers are in very good condition. I didn't want to get those wet, so I didn't submerge the whole vehicle in water. I just used a toothbrush to gently wash away the grime and then anything that was just fully plastic, that got submerged in the water. And as you can see now, this is how the bike looks. It's already looking a lot better. Just cleaning it up has made quite a big difference. Uh, the next thing I want to do is actually to start putting some of it back together. Because this has been partially taken apart, there is a little uh, bit of plastic which is held together with a metal rivets on either side that still holds the sidecar onto the main bike. But this is getting sort of quite a lot of uh, bending motion to it because they're, it's not easy to undo that. So I'm actually going to put the rear axle back in to this bike and get that all fixed up so that I don't uh, break it anymore. I feel having it like this is just uh, asking for trouble and it's asking for something to break. So uh, we're going to put the wheels back on and then we can carry on with some of the other restorations. Uh, I don't think putting the wheels back on will affect any of the other bits that I want to do. So let's get that bit sorted. The rear axle consists of a metal axle rod uh, with two little end clips. Now one end clip is still on this and one has been 
unclipped. Uh, there's a little plastic spacer which is what holds the uh, bike and sidecar apart and a couple of washers and then obviously the two wheels. Now this has been unclipped. I have to say I probably wouldn't have unclipped this myself. I'd have left it all in place to clean it. Uh, and because it's been unclipped you can see some of the little uh, metal sort of uh, I don't know what you would call them, just little sort of insert bits have bent slightly. So I'm going to use a small pair of pliers here just to try and bend these back uh, just a bit flatter uh, so that we can then re reattach this. As you can see, that's not too bad. They're quite easy to uh, bend, so just a small pair of pliers and I can do that like so. I think that's good. So now we can go ahead and uh, put the uh, axle back in. We can now put the axle in place. So here we have the axle which needs one washer put on the end of it like so. Uh, we can then take one wheel and push it through uh, the sort of motorbike section between the two sort of engine uh, exhaust pipes uh, and then we'll take the axle and we'll push this through just like so. It can be a little bit awkward to do this. The uh, wheels are a little bit stiff and at this point we then get the uh, plastic spacer as you can see here and this is what goes between the bike and the sidecar so we can push that onto the axle and carry on pushing the axle through like so and then it should go all the way through to the other side like that and then again we can add the next wheel push that in place uh, one more washer and now we have to add the end cap and for the, adding the end cap I'm going to need a couple of bits of wood and a hammer. We'll get this bit set up and I'll show you what I mean. I've now put the bike on its side and placed it on a piece of wood so that the end of the axle is resting on that wood uh, and then I'm going to take the other end which is this little pin that I've uh, straightened and push that over the top and then I just roughly get that in place. I'd have to do this on off camera. Then I'm going to get another piece of wood and just hold that over it. And then I'm going to hit the wood with a hammer and gently tap the end piece on. Hopefully that way nothing should get damaged. So I'll do this uh, while I'm in front of the camera and you should be able to see what I mean. And there we have it. As you can see, that wasn't so hard to do. Uh, the reason I used bits of wood is just that I don't end up damaging uh, these little sort of end caps any more than they are. They have a little bit of uh, tarnish on them, but uh, I don't actually mind. That gives this uh, vehicle a bit of age. And there you can see the uh, wheels are on and moving freely again. Now this uh, feels a lot sturdier now, and I'm not going to be so worried about uh, this pin inside breaking. It means that we can get on with some of the other things I want to try and fix on here. Now on the front of this vehicle there are a few scratch marks on the sidecar here and a few little sort of uh, dings and that where it's been played with quite a lot and I've read a few times that people say that you can use bumper gel and a uh, plastic conditioner to sort of uh, reinvigorate the plastic of these vehicles so I picked up some uh, bumper gel here I picked this up off eBay it's quite expensive this whole uh, bottle cost eight pounds but it says here it revives dull plastic surfaces and leaves a waterproof finish so I thought I would give this a go and there's no harm in trying these things so what I I'm going to do just take a little bit of this stuff I have already given it a good shake and I'm going to squirt a little bit onto a kitchen towel here just a tiny amount because I don't think we're going to need a huge amount to get this looking right and the idea is that you sort of buff it on let it dry a bit and then uh, rub the excess off uh, with a, a clean cloth so as you can see there it already sort of has covered the marks and I'm just going to gently rub this over the worst areas I don't want to do to all of it because I think the vehicle uh, it looks quite good with a little bit of a sort of a dull finish to it um, but I'm hoping this will work so this is a new uh, technique for me to try it's always good to try uh, new things there's a few scratches on the side here so let's give that a go normally I'd use something like tea cut uh, you know again a car uh, sort of finishing product and that works quite well but uh, I think a gentle wipe with it with this is not going to cause any problems so let's let that dry and I'll, I'll uh, buff off uh, the excess and we'll see how it looks after that so here we are sort of 20 minutes later. I've given everything a good buff down uh, and sort of rub over with the uh, bumper cleaner. And as you can see, it actually looks pretty nice. The scratches on the front are still there, but they're a lot less noticeable. And the whole of the plastic has a sort of more 
uh, well, more original finish to it, I think. It's looking an awful lot shinier, like it would have done as it sort of came out of the box. So I think that's actually a pretty good treatment. Obviously, I don't know what this is going to do in the long term, but I'm hoping that uh, shouldn't damage it. It's designed for uh, restoring plastic, so I think this should be OK. Uh, so the next thing to do is let's attach the uh, front wheel and the uh, handlebars, and uh, then we can start looking at fixing the gun mounting and adding uh, the replacement stickers that we need to make and also the aerial that's missing on the side. So let's get the uh, front uh, wheel and handlebars attached. Again for this this is held on with one of these sort of metal uh, little end caps. I've already uh, bent these internal pegs so that they're a bit flatter again. These are, again have got a little bit bent uh, and I think it shouldn't be too hard to actually push this one on. I don't think I need to use a hammer or anything. So we can put the front wheel in. Obviously it has to go around a certain way with the number plate facing forwards. So we can just slot that through the hole. Uh, and then obviously with the handlebars go on. Now these go on one way round, there is a little sort of flat side to the inner circle, so you can't get this wrong, but really you shouldn't get this wrong anyway because they are handlebars, they have to go specific way round. So let me squeeze that on. I just had to do that little bit off camera because it's actually quite hard to uh, squeeze that through. And then we just have this little thing to push on the end. So I reckon that I should just be able to push that on with my thumb like so, there we go, and that's held in place, and so the handlebars should turn nicely. So let's now move on to fixing the gun mounting that uh, mounts on the side of the sidecar here. Now a common problem with the gun seems to be that the peg that holds it onto the uh, motorbike sidecar snaps. Uh, the peg should go into a small hole here on the front and the gun sits on it like that. And it's just the fact that it's a very small bit of plastic and so over the years it gets snapped off. Now I've had a quick think about what I'm going to do for this. And if you've watched a lot of my other restorations you'll know that I like using Lego for fixing things. And I have to say Lego is probably the, uh, the best option I've found again for fixing this. Now I'm going to use a small bit of technical Lego. You can see these little pegs. These are very easy to pick up and buy. They're not very expensive and it's very useful to have a whole pot of little bits like this lying around because you can use it for all sorts of fixes. So my plan is to carefully trim down the uh, cross-section part of this peg so that it fits in the hole. This hole is three millimeters and uh, technical Lego sort of actual diameters are four millimeters. So if I trim that down uh, that then should fit in the hole there. And I've already actually modified the gun. The peg on here is three millimeters and the hole inside here is slightly over two. So I've actually just trimmed uh, the end of this peg down a bit so it fits in the end of this peg. And we'll, we'll trim this end down as well. And we should make something that will fit in this hole. So let's go ahead and do that. So after a little bit of trimming I've ended up with something like this. So you can see I've chopped the top end of the peg off and I've trimmed the cross section down. Now this cross section fits in that hole pretty snugly. I'm not going to push that fully in because it's actually quite hard to get out but it fits in. Should still be able to rotate it. And this end now fits onto the broken peg of the gun if you see here. I can push that in place like so and it fits on quite nicely. So I'm going to glue that on and then I'm going to give it a little coat of uh, some black acrylic paint just so that it matches. And then that should fit in there quite nicely and we have the gun reattached to the sidecar. So first up let's glue this on. I'm just going to use a bit of uh, super glue here because uh, this should glue quite strongly. Just a little blob in the hole there at the end of the Lego peg. And then I'm going to push this onto the remains of uh, the peg here. It's actually probably a little bit too much super glue, so I'm just going to get a tissue and just dab that off. You don't need too much, otherwise you're going to glue everything in place. Glue the gun so that it doesn't move. So let's just stick that on. That looks about right. So we'll let that dry. Then I'm just going to use a quick bit of acrylic paint. This is Humble number. 33 black just to paint the top part. I'm not going to paint the bottom part of the peg because that will be hidden inside and the paint will get rubbed off anyway. So I'm just going to paint uh, the top part of the peg there so that it doesn't show up so much. So 
So here is the gun all painted up as you can see. It's just a little bit of black paint just to hide the bit of Lego there. I did actually paint the peg in the end but uh, that will get scratched off as I put it into the vehicle. So we can now just drop it into the sidecar at the front and you can see that that fits quite nicely and I should still be able to rotate the gun around and up and down. So really pleased with how that's worked. Uh, let's get on to the next fix. For fixing the cracked seat, I'm actually going to be using some serious glue. Now this is uh, different to super glue. Uh, it doesn't dry sort of uh, into a hard glue. It stays relatively soft. It also takes a very long time to dry. It's sort of mildly dry in about 10 minutes and takes 24 hours to go off fully. Now I think this is probably going to be the best sort of glue to use to stick this because although this is quite brittle, it does have a little bit of flex to it and you need a little bit of flex for it to uh, actually be fitted onto the back of the bike. So what I'm going to do is going to glue it like this first, let that set fully for uh, 24 hours and then on the back side of this I'm going to stick some, uh, I'm actually going to use sort of electrical tape uh, to try and give it a little bit more strength. Now I've already ordered some tape. Uh, here in the UK electrical tape comes in quite a few colours uh, because of our, the way our power cables are coloured and one of those colours is brown. So I've ordered some of that and I'm just waiting for it to arrive but in the meantime that gives us a good chance to get this glued. So uh, as you can see it's sort of still held on at one end just about and I'm going to leave that as is and then I'm going to use some of this glue and very carefully put it along the edge and uh, try and get this glued uh, back into place. It could be a little bit of a tricky job. I'm going to try and keep the glue all on the inside of uh, the uh, seat but if it does squeeze through I will uh, just carefully wipe that off. As you can see someone has already tried to repair this and I think that's been done with super glue. Now I'm not going to break the uh, bit that has already been repaired because I risk damaging the seat even more but I should be able to tidy that up a little bit more once everything is glued and dried. So as you can see there that's a um, pretty good match. The uh, serious glue as well you can actually scrape off after it because it stays a bit rubbery you can just sort of gently cut off any bits that have squidged out afterwards so I should be able to tidy that up quite nicely once everything has dried. So really it's just a case of leaving that for 24 hours and we'll come back to it then. It's now 24 hours later and the glue has had time to dry and as you can see that's that stuck pretty well. It now uh, feels pretty firmly glued there so I'm pretty happy with how that's worked out. Uh, really I wanted to do, just do a bit of uh, reinforcement on the inside because obviously this is only held just along the edge there. So the stuff I've ordered has now turned up and what it is is this PVC insulation tape. If I just take off that second you'll see that it is a brown tape. The colour match is not so bad. Really it doesn't matter too much because this is all going to be on the inside of uh, the seat here uh, but I wanted to buy something that actually just sort of didn't stand out too much. So I'm just going to take a strip of this. Now this again is quite um, sort of sturdy tape. It's quite thick. Uh, you can see how sort of thick it is. Uh, and I'm just going to cut a small length of this using a pair of scissors there. And then I'm going to carefully stick that along the cracks on the inside and trim off any excess. Uh, and this should just give it a little bit of extra sort of hold uh, so that if it does get bent uh, this should hopefully hold everything in place. So as you can see there I can just gently push that onto the uh, cracks. It should stick quite nicely. Again, I'm just going to use a knife here just to trim off the end. Uh, and then I think that's all we can do on that. It's never going to be a perfect fix because this has already been repaired a couple of times. I might use a bit of that plastic um, restorer just to rub over this just to give it one final little clean. But I think that will do. Then we can put this back onto the bike. So let's trim this off with a knife. Now we can see about uh, fitting the seat. I have given it a quick rub over with the plastic restore and it's actually given it quite a nice sort of finish. So we can just squeeze this in place. Now this does actually have to sort of flex a bit to click on to uh, the saddle area here. So I'm hoping if I do this gently enough none of the glue will crack and that should just fit in place. There we go. That doesn't look too bad at all. So that's the seat all done. The final thing to do on this bike is the stickers. As you can see here I have the little aerial but that has the wrong sticker on it. There's a sticker missing on the side here. Uh, we're also missing one of the little red dots on the side of the 
petrol tank there and then some of the stickers on the back are missing so I did have a quick search around online and I couldn't find any very good quality sort of stickers someone had scanned in the original uh, stickers off of one of these bikes and from that I was able to take those into Photoshop and then a good few hours of work of uh, recreating them I was able to recreate all of the stickers in a much better higher quality uh, format and this file will be available on toypoloi.com at the end of this video so if you want to uh, do these yourself you can go there and download the pdf and print them out and so after all of that work i ended up with this as you can see here this is the new replacement stickers i've printed these out onto uh, sticky backed uh, printer paper and i've also given them a light uh, spray with some uh, clear lacquer that you can buy I've, if you watch some of my other videos you'll see that i uh, spray all of my stickers with a clear lacquer just to give it a nice sort of finish so I'm going to use these to uh, replace the ones that are missing on this bike as you can see I'm only actually missing a few on this bike so I just need to use the one for the flag the little uh, deer on the side and a couple of the other little ones like the uh, German symbols that go on the back of the bike so uh, let, let's get these all cut out and added to, to the bike and we'll see what it looks like when it's all finished And so here we have the German motorcycle and sidecar fit to go back on display. As you can see, everything is now back up and running and it looks really nice. This wasn't the most complicated of restorations to do. There was only a few little bits that needed fixing, but even still, those are fairly fiddly jobs, uh, but they're worth doing, especially things like the gun mount, because it's much better to have the gun mounted properly so that it can uh, move around. And if you want to put your action man inside this, he can sit and hold the gun properly. So I have to say thanks again to Gary Newton for sending this over to me. It's been a really fun project to do and I hope all the tips and tricks that I've shown you in this video have been of interest to you and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Poloi. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Poloi on Twitter and Facebook.